You're listening to Channel Talk 101, where we discuss topics that explain the best tactics in channel marketing. To help manufacturers sell more of their products. Talk 101, educating you on channel marketing. Channel Talk 101, marketing, sales and solutions. Welcome to Channel Talk 101. And, uh, you know, we're continuing some great conversations about, uh, you know, how channel marketing can be one of the most effective ways of, of driving revenue. And, uh, you know, Business Class News has always strived to really tell stories about how to uh, grow your business, how to make yourself more effective, etc. And this series of, um, uh, of of conversations that we're actually doing here on Channel Talk 101 is brought to you by our friends at Gorilla um, Corporation. And so literally, um, l- the last conversation I had, we talked to, of course, Carlo Breda, who's going to be joining me uh, in a second. And we were talking about uh, trust and relationship is a huge huge factor for any partner program to succeed and um, we ran an article uh, last week on channeltalk101.com that talked about how their how gorilla is uh, is actually expanding in the middle east and africa and they've they've created a, a sort of an organization out there and um, i thought I've got to I've got to learn more about this and actually uh, bring on the the person who head who heads this up and he's a gentleman called William O'Doul and so um, we've got Carlo and William on the studio line now so thank you gentlemen for joining me it's it's great for for you to join me uh, today. Hey, thanks for having us on the segment, uh, Carl. We're really excited to to be here and to share uh, some ideas with you. So so. Carlo, you and I had our last conversation, and we talked about off camera about the the World Economic Forum is actually saying that um, uh, Africa, specifically, I don't want to focus on Africa really today, um, it, it is going to be one of the strongest economies and opportunities for technology going forward. And I thought that was that was quite um, eye opening for me, uh, and uh, and. And in a good way, because I'm, I'm thinking, wow, this is fantastic that that is actually opening up. And so uh, tell me more why you wanted to open up, Carlo, into that uh, into that market. Well, from my perspective, it's really it's the most exciting new frontier. Uh, we, you know, over, over the last uh, few years, uh, the dynamics of African business has really uh, de- developed incredibly. Uh, things are, are very exciting. The... Um, uh, a lot of analysts um, uh, and the World Economic Forum uh, confirm that uh, the projections are, are uh, very exciting. The, there are trillions of dollars of business opportunities that will be evident and available on the African continent by as early as 2025. Uh, so uh, getting ready for that market, understanding the market, positioning yourself as um, you know one of the early brands that, that goes in and becomes a uh, um, you know, household uh, name, if you like, is, is really is the right time is, uh, is now. And so we decided to, um, to find the, you know, the best person that we could find to help us lead our, our operations out there. And uh, that, that's my colleague, William Modwell, who will uh, speak shortly. Fantastic. So, so, William, thank you for, for joining us. And, um, you know, off camera, we just had a great conversation about your background as such. And, 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 you know, Carlo and I had talked about trust and relationship, etc., and that really is the core pillar of what the organization over there in, in, in Africa is all about, isn't it? It's about trust and relationships because you know, yes. it, it's, it's a different a different marketplace than, than European or, or North American landscapes, isn't it? 
Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Carl. Uh, I agree with you entirely. I mean, Africa is, is, is a big elephant. I mean, you can't eat it into one meal. Uh, it's, it's, it's eaten into pieces. And um, as I was telling you off camera, I mean, uh, there are different uh, regulatory requirements uh, when you're coming to Africa. If you are in Kenya, you will invariably need to go through what they call the CAPS requirements. If you're in Nigeria, it's some CAP requirements. Angola and the rest of the uh, other African countries uh, is different. And, and so you need to understand the African uh, geography and dynamics to navigate the business environment. And uh, talking of relationships, uh, Carl, business in Africa invariably is done on relationships. There are folks today that I would give $1 million credit uh, because of the relationship that I have had with them over time that you would probably not even give a $10 uh, credit. Uh, there are folks in Africa that if you were to use any of the ratings, uh, Gradon's uh, report or the rest of the other ratings, you would not touch even with a 10 uh, feet pole. But these are customers that I have done business with and have never defaulted on, uh, on, on credit. And, and so the most important piece to business success in Africa is partnering with people that understand the dynamics, partnering with people that understand the channel. And I will tell you this, you can either make a lot of money in Africa, you can also lose a lot of money in Africa. It is important that you partner with um, people that have been around. And as I was telling you, I have been in the African uh, business technology industry for in excess of uh, 25 years. I understand the channel. I know the partners. I understand how uh, different governments operate. And, and so we are super excited. And especially with the revamped uh, Gorilla Middle Eastern Africa operation, we are very excited that uh, we are bringing um, our vendors closer to where it matters. I mean, Africa is the next last frontier. And um, Africa is rising. Uh, six trillion economy, 54 countries, um, the burgeoning uh, middle class. So um, Africa is the next big thing. And I encourage uh, most of my listeners to look at uh, investing and extending uh, their reach into the African geography. So that's that's interesting what you just said, uh, uh, and with that growth of opportunity as such, you know, the the infrastructure is that. The, the, I mean, you know, everybody has a, an image of Africa. You know, the 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 the, the gold, the wealth, etc. That rich uh, culture that you have over there. But the, the infrastructure for technology, that, that's growing, is it? I mean, in terms of, I mean, you know, you've got you know, Cape Town and some of the developed cities, et cetera. But outside of there, you know, it's, it's, it's really the infrastructure is growing, is it? Yes. Um, the infrastructure is growing. Um, and, and by the way, Africa needs everything, right, from infrastructure to education, to healthcare, consumer goods, and uh, retail, and, and surprisingly, they can pay for it. And, and Africa's middle class is also bigger than uh, India. Um, and, and it is also projected that uh, by the turn of 2021, uh, African households will have discretionary spending power. Uh, there's also been a lot of uh, 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 regulatory uh, improvements across the African geography. Uh, governments are relaxing uh, uh, their, their dem democratic uh, space. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, foreign direct investments into sub-Saharan Africa. In fact, it, it is uh, over the last two, three years, it has been showing a compounded uh, uh, growth rate. Um, uh, there are sub-regional hubs uh, coming up across uh, South Africa. You look at South Africa, you look at Kenya, you look at Nigeria. Uh, uh, poverty is also for, uh, projected to reduce from 20, uh, 60% uh, from in 1996 to by the turn of 2021, we are looking at only 35%. Um, and again, I talked about the rapid emergence of uh, middle class already exceeding uh, that of India. And lastly, and uh, most importantly, 
uh, in Africa, 27 African countries. And this is, by the way, the Ernest and Young Africa Attractiveness uh, Survey that they carried out uh, last year. They said that uh, 27 African countries already attained uh, middle income status. And by 2025, this is important, 75% of all African countries will achieve that middle, Afri uh, middle income status by 2025. So Africa is 54 countries. It means in 2025, 40 of those 54 countries shall have achieved their middle income status. That is amazing. And so, so amazing. really, at, at the end of the day, you know, what I'm hearing is, you know, if you're a manufacturer, um, you're an infrastructure company, etc., you know, it really is the next frontier that they could really uh, earn a lot of revenue from if they did the, the, the distribution right correct so if they got the right partners into into that area they could expand and grow their their, their, their company exponentially totally and 100 percent. Let, let me just uh, jump in i just wanted to i'm getting really excited and i wanted to say something else uh which is uh worth saying i think is uh that uh africa as a continent it's a continent of uh, early adopters uh and that's that's really exciting so if if for all the technologies that are cutting edge technologies, Africa is actually a very good market for those. Uh, and the reason for that is that, for example, there's not enough, uh, you know, there isn't that, the legacy mentality. Uh, often enough, uh, folks aren't, don't, don't have the difficult decision to migrate off an archaic platform or something. So they can just jump in straight into the newest technology and actually start leading with that, with those technologies. And that's, I think, part of the success. One example that perhaps uh, William can elaborate on because he worked at Safaricom and is, uh, is the example of mobile money. So I don't know if you knew this, Carl, but Kenya was probably the first country in the world or one of the very first in the world. I think it was the first in the world to adopt the concept of mobile money. Uh, so to go to market and pay with your phone it's something that, you know, we're only just getting used to it now here in California. In Kenya, they've been doing it for maybe more than 10 years. They've been going to the market and you can buy anything. You can swap money with people on your phone. Was, this was a whole concept called M-Pesa, which was, I think, yes. uh, by Safaricom. But what a great concept and what an example of innovation of Africa leading the world in, in some great innovation. And so let's just go and develop and and and. and Throw more innovation there, and uh, and um, help Africa also to become uh, one of one of the leading uh, continents in the world. The World Economic Forum uh, speculates that the four biggest economies by by mid century are going to be United States, China, India, and Nigeria. And Nigeria is going to be beyond India because Nigeria has an enormous wealth in the form of the oil industry. And it has a huge population that is just growing like fury. Uh, Ethiopia is also growing double-digit GDP. Uh, each of these countries has, um, you know, very, very substantial populations uh, that are becoming middle-class uh, uh, capable, uh, uh, you know, with discretionary spending. I mean, the opportunity, it's, it's, it's crazy to, over, to overlook it, you know. So just, just, just to bolster what Carlos said, uh, Carl, um, you know, 11 of the 20 uh, fa uh, fastest growing economies come from Africa. And um, just to put it into perspective, especially in terms of acreage, uh, Africa is 30 million square kilometers. And so Africa, ideally, is the sum total of the United States of America, Argentina, India, China, and you still have some room for Western Europe. In fact, those countries, if I combine them, the total acreage for those countries is shy of 30 million square kilometers. It's actually 29,843,000 square kilometers. Africa is 1.3 billion population. I talked about 6 trillion economy. So if you're not in Africa, um, you, you, you haven't uh, scratched the surface. And it is incumbent on vendors, and particularly technology vendors, because that's the area that I understand very well, to partner, look for the right partners. Partners that have been in Africa, 
partners that have the right uh, uh, networks, deep-seated uh, relationships and networks that uh, they have built over time. And then we are here to take our partners uh, to market in a very accelerated basis. And so I'm super excited with the um, uh, recently launched Gorilla Middle East and Africa operations. We are based out of uh, Cape Town in South Africa with an operational base in Nairobi, Kenya, but we are covering the whole uh, length and breadth of uh, Middle East and Africa. And, uh, you know, we're here to take our partners uh, to market and uh, uh, make them successful. Well, let's, let's just recap of, 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 where, of, of what we talked about the last time, Carlo, um, mm -hmm. and William, really, to, to sort of um, uh, elaborate on what you've just said. So, so Gorilla is is there and if you if you take away the from the last and i'll put the link to the last interview that carlo and i did where we talk mm -hmm. about what actual core solutions and services gorilla bring to the table it's partner recruitment it's partner marketing it's making sure that there's a concierge where you can actually you know work with that manufacturer software developer etc technology um uh, sort of manufacturer really to enhance and make sure that the partner has all the tools that they have so that they can be successful but then you take the trust and the relationship piece that you just overlaid onto that. And because if you're going into Africa, you can't just walk in and go, okay, I'm, I'm setting up a regional office here and I'm going to, you know, uh, you know, sell billions of dollars of, of, of product because you haven't got that infrastructure, that, that trust and the relationships, which you have. William, because you've been yes. doing it, as you say, over 25 years now. Yes. Um, we talked about, um, you know, the the other side of that is is, is Razo, uh, which is <laughs> is a complementary distribution um, uh, sort of uh, offer that you have, which where you take everybody through that process, but you've got a distribution arm called Razo. Explain what that is. So, uh, I will I will I'll put it this way. I mean, the traditional role of a distributor is three things. It's logistics, it's warehousing, and credit, finance, if you like. And, and so as Razu and Gorilla, we said that we needed to uh, go a little further than that. So what Razu and Gorilla offers you is what, not what your traditional distributor is going to offer you. We are not a behemoth. We are not a big distributor. We are a smaller, nimbler, and somewhat disruptive distributor. And we are also very keen and excited to partner with organizations that play in the game-changing and disruptive uh, space. So Gorilla catalyzes and optimizes the channel on behalf of our vendors. And once that is done, the channel is optimized and excited about technologies and solutions there needs to be fulfillment. And that's what Razo now does. So Razo and Gorilla in Middle Eastern Africa, while Gorilla catalyzes, activates, and uh, you know makes sure that uh, the partners are excited through recruitment, through onboarding, uh, scoring, and the rest of the nice uh, stuff that Gorilla does, Razo, this the distributor that Gorilla has now set up on the side does the fulfillment. Oftentimes, a uh, good number of our vendors, uh, because of the relationships that we've had with them, um, very happy with uh, what we are doing in terms of channel development and um, as a marketing agency. But they, they never have a dependable distributor that would be able to fulfill or would be able to deploy their solutions. And so this is what Razo does. We are a specialty distributor that has access to best of breed specialty partners. And the one thing that we do is that we are not a broadliner and we are not a volume distributor. We play in the value space and we are known for the solutions and services that we provide to the channel. We are a 100% two tier channel. We do not compete with our partners. And our sweetest uh, source, uh, Carl, if you allow me,
is that uh, in situations where our partner organizations, resale organizations, do not have skills, within our organizations as Razo and together with the help of Gorilla, we've managed to create a department, an organization within our organization called Channel Enablement Services. So we are able to seed skilled resources to the partner community in situations where the partners do not have the requisite skills. So we seed our staff, they go and wear the partner badge, do the deployment, and then in the back end, we work on a revenue share with the partner. And I mean, the partners are super excited about, about this. I mean, never used to happen in Africa or in the Middle East. So uh, some of those game-changing stuff that we are bringing to market, and, and we are known for the solutions and services that, that, that we bring, and we don't push boxes. And that's, that's what we are known for. That's fantastic. Um, unfortunately, we're coming up to the end of this particular segment, but I know, <laughs> I know, but this is going to be a continuing series anyway, because Carlo and I have got a whole slew of, of of topics that we're going to be talking about. But I think there's going to be another show with you on William, because I think there's some in depth things that we can really deep dive into. So, um, just just to summarize, um, mm -hmm. if you if you wouldn't mind. Um, what should companies be thinking of when they're planning their strategy of, you know, making uh, an entry into Africa? What should they be thinking about? I mean, of course, the obvious one is talk to William and <laughs> talk to Gorilla over there. But, I mean, the, uh, is there a checklist that maybe you could share? I mean, maybe that's something that if the people want, we can send them a checklist. But uh, um, what do you think? So... Uh, three things actually and um i will, I will uh, out of the three things i will disabuse one of them uh, the three things that customers look for in africa is functionality of the product or the solution number two and very very important is after sales service and lastly to some extent is the price point africa does not uh, have a lot of money However, we are a fairly ostentatious uh, uh, continent. Uh, sometimes we buy because of price. Sometimes we buy because it is expensive. But um, the overriding factor is the right price point. So the right price point, uh, functionality of the product or the solution, and importantly, after sales service. And when you talk about after sales service, that's where we come in as Gorilla and as Razo. Because we invariably become the vendor's trusted advisor and the vendor's extended fit on the ground. Well, I think that that makes complete sense. And at the end of the day, you know, it's a very complex sort of decision for manufacturers and, and vendors to, to start to, to look at. So having somebody like yourself who has all mm -hmm. of that experience and sort of the infrastructure that you could literally, you know, uh, put it into a box and then put it over to you guys. And then you literally can, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of, I don't know, launch out a great campaign on behalf of that uh, manufacturer or vendor. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time this morning. It's been really, really, really educational for me. Um, I know that uh, there's going to be lots of questions from the audience, so uh, they all know how to find me, Carl at businessclassnews.com, and uh, we'll be putting all the information onto the uh, onto the website. So thanks for joining me, and uh, until the next time, William, um, I definitely want you back on because you're a wealth of information. And thanks, Carlo, for, for joining me again. It's an absolute pleasure, Carl. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much.